Today I'm going to talk about bowl gouge grinding and in particular the 40-40 uh, grind. And I've got a couple of things about the 40-40 uh, that I'd, I'd like to talk about. One is um, the how you would create one from scratch if you didn't already have a 4040 grind on your gouge. Sharpening an existing 4040, yes. And then what happens when you mess it up? How do you fix it? Because the jigs, any of these jigs, are really just a way to get the angle set. The jig isn't going to give you the profile. All it's going to give you is the angle. And so I, I want to be sure uh, to talk about how to fix your problems. And then I've got something else. Um, many months ago, I discovered a, or I came across a jig for doing a 4040, and I've bought one. I've been thinking I would test it out. And so I finally did get a chance to work with it, and I'm going to show you that one. You might want to try that yourself. Uh, I sharpen on a platform, however. Um, so yeah, uh, if you have gouge grinding questions, or you'd like to talk about um, your gouge grind, some of the problems you've had, and uh, yes, definitely, please say hello in the chat, but put your questions in the chat, and I will get to them as I can. Uh, so yeah, let's get um, started on this, and I wanted to start with a bowl gouge and describing what is a 4040. A 4040 gouge grind is where you have a 40 degree angle between the bottom of the flute and the cutting bevel. In other words, a 40 degree included angle at the cutting edge. The other 40 to 4040 is there's also a 40 degree angle between the shaft of the tool and the sweep of the wing. So that's what gets me 4040. And here is one. This is a V flute gouge. And there are several styles of V flute that I have. This one has happens to have a very fairly narrow top to the V and a larger diameter tip. Um, let's see what else I have. What else I have is kind of a little further away, right? But I'm going to talk about them uh, later. And the truth is, 4040 is not a flute shape. 4040 is a bevel grind. So you can take pretty much any flute shape of bowl gouge that you have and create a 4040 on it. Most people say they prefer to have an elliptical flute for a bowl gouge for a 4040. And yeah, maybe that's optimum, but there are so many V flute gouges out there and I actually like using a V flute gouge just fine and um I find that well that's what I use because I like the steel in the Thompson gouges. So another thing you'll notice about this bowl gouge which is not a function of 4040 particularly, is that I have ground away the heel, leaving me just a narrow cutting bevel at the edge. So that this heel part, if this was one big long flat here, the heel part would rub on the wood behind the cut. And, and I don't want that. So I've just freehand removed the material at the heel leaving about a sixteenth of an inch, about a millimeter and a half wide cutting bevel at the right at the edge. And that's only applicable, that's only only useful right at the tip. And I have ground away some of the wing heel as well, just because it makes the sharpening a little easier. So very good. Um, now uh, a couple of things. I've got some cameras set up over at the grinders and I want to show you on the grinder what I'm going to be doing. So I'd like to show you some setup gauges 
for setting a platform to the angle you need. And then I'll show you how I use them. Um, and to just get started on our, uh, our giveaway. And also I want to, I want to talk about some different types of angle gauge that are out there. This is the Stuart Batty type of angle gauge. Uh, get out a little bit so you can actually see it. This is the Stuart Batty angle gauge one, and it's got a number of useful angles. I'm going to show you how to use this over at the grinder. Um, there is, that's number one. Here's number two. It's got some other angles, some of which I use, um, most of which I don't. And then here's angle gauge three, and it's, it's got some other different things like this 90 here and this 45 over here, which are very useful for setting up a, a, a disc sander, table saw, or other sorts of things. These, these gauges, it's a set of three. I'm giving away number one today. They come in a very nice box and big surprise nowadays, they come with actual written instructions. Can you believe it? I don't believe it. Uh, let me show you if I can. Here is how to use this angle gauge. You put it on the platform and you don't touch both corners to the wheel. You just line the one that says the angle you want up with the wheel. Yes, I'm going to show you this uh, momentarily. I want to talk about a few other angle gauge types first. Here is another set. This is a set and a few different angles. Uh, these are 3D printed by my good friend uh, David Drickhammer. They go like this, don't they? Very good. And these work pretty much the same way as the Raptor, Raptor, the Raptor's got all this here, which is useful for, if you use it, setting up something for uh, the Wolverine thing. I, mean, I don't use that part of it. So, Stu is going, is making these again. He has lots of them in stock and I have some in my possession and I'll be selling them on my website. So yeah, you can get those. Whether you can actually get um, this platform that he makes, that should those should be in production in a few months, he says. So look for those also. But right now, uh, yes, the angle gauges are available. So, um, yeah, that's great. Now, what else do I have? Oh, I have something very, very interesting. This is the new thing that I uh, discovered. I don't remember where I got the idea about it. Um, it's made by Ron Brown, and his company is called Ron Brown's Best. I'm going to put, I can't post an actual link live link here, but we will find ronbrownsbest.com is where you can find this. So look for his 4040 grinding jig. And I'm going to show you how to make, how to use this also. It's actually works surprisingly well, for me not being much of a uh, Wolverine jig person, um, I have to admit it seems to work pretty well. So if you insist on using a Wolverine and won't learn how to use a platform, then uh, yeah, uh, this might get you there. Another one that's good, which I don't happen to have and I wish I did, is Johannes Mickelson makes a... Uh, What's it called? Starts with a V. Not Vortex. 
Vector, I think it's called, jig. And it does a better job on 4040 than your standard Wolverine. Uh, so, what is in Stuart, Stuart's tools? I must have missed. Oh, Ashley. Okay, Ashley is selling her own tools. And yes, she's kind of uh, 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 used some of Stu's style of things. But, and they are made out of 10V. So Ashley's tools, I guess, are probably pretty good. Uh, but no, they're not Stuart's. He, she used to sell Stu's tools, buy them from him and resell them. But uh, now that's not what she's doing. She's got her own machine shop. She's doing her own thing. Uh, will I ship to the UK? Yes, absolutely. It's slow and it costs a lot, but yes, I'll do it. I wish there was a better way. I wish I had better answers, but kind of a drag that with our countries not uh, cooperating better. Now, did I miss any questions up here? I don't think so. Okay. If I miss your question, there's a lot of scrolling up of the, the comments and stuff. Um, but uh, so if I, if I don't answer your question or, or respond to your comment, please do it again. Oh, and Daniel, you must put the hashtag first or you won't be entered. So enter again, hashtag angle gauge. And it might have to be all lowercase as well. Uh, those of you who are not of the hashtag generation, it's a number sign or a pound sign. <laughs> now they call it a hashtag. Okay. Uh, eh, it's not what I wanted. I wanted to put this one up there. Why a 4040 over, let's say, a 50? Well, that's an excellent question, and it there is no actual perfect answer to that. 40 degrees, well, okay, let's say the more acute the angle, that's a lower number, the sharper the slicing cut will be. Like picture a razor blade is an extreme. The more obtuse the angle, that's a larger number, the more like an axe it will be. Now you have to smash an axe into the wood with a lot of force to get it to cut. Whereas a razor blade, you barely put any pressure on it and it'll cut. So 40 is a good compromise between a clean cut and with a, a clean cut with not too much pressure, but not too grabby either. So that's why Stu Batty, who pretty much pioneered the concept of 4040, that's why he uh, uses that. Now, if you have a 40 degree angle on your gouge and you try to do a bowl, you're going to find that you can't keep the bevel in contact as you round the corner of a deep bowl in the bottom. So there's where a 50 might be a better choice. If I'm doing outsides, if I'm planing with the wings, I like the um, 40 a lot better. I will pick up a bottom bowl gouge with a 50 degree angle to do the bottom one third of my bowls. If I do bowls, which I hardly ever do, but yeah. Uh, so uh, that's um, that's a, a kind of a general rundown on why would you choose one angle over another. Some people like 60 because it allows them to get around the bottom of an even deeper bowl. Uh, there are other grinds besides 40-40, like some of them where the tip angle and the wing angle are not the same. My 40-40 here has got the uh, tip and wings the same bevel angle all the way around. If you use the Wolverine with its it's standard setup, follow the directions that came with your Wolverine, you're going to get something that has like 40 on the wing and 60 on the tip because that's the way they've set that up. So uh, I personally like a wing that will, will do uh, planing cuts and a tip that will cut with a 40 degree bevel. So yeah, um, I, I hear some good things about this angle gauge. This is Ron Brown's best, again, and you can, you can look up Ron Brown online. Um, if you ever 
wish you had some information that I gave out and you forgot it and it's not in the comments, uh, send me an email and I will get it to you. This format here that I'm doing does not allow for, um, for me to post a live link in the chat easily. Okay, let's get the, this back on there. Remember, you can, uh, you can enter the drawing for a free angle gauge giveaway uh, by typing hashtag angle gauge, no spaces, all lowercase. And this is just how it's supposed to look. Okay, so yeah, let me go over to the grinder with some of these gauges and we'll show you um, some of what I've learned about this. So there's my grinder. I'm going to take all of these over there and we'll talk a little bit about how they work. So the first thing I want to do here, and this is me here, <laughs> is I want to put a platform on the grinder. And this, this grinder has the Wolverine system on it. It's a super coarse wheel. This is not what I use for sharpening. The only reason I have it is because this is the only wheel out of the six I have has a Wolverine on it. And so I needed that for today. So this is just for demo purposes. I do not sharpen with a 46 grit 3X wheel on a daily basis. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna set this up for my, my favorite kind of grinding, which is a, using a platform. And I'll take, to do that, I'll take my angle, my protractor, and with the protractor, I will put it across the top of the platform, which is intended to be parallel with the edge of the wheel. And I'll just make a line here. And then we'll go over to the other side, 40 degrees, and we'll make a line on the other side. Those are for platform grinding of a 4040, uh, which I will show you, yes. And that is how I get the sweep angle. So uh, let me uh, talk a bit now about how I'm going to use all of those angle gauges I described. And all of them are for setting the angle on your platform. They are not for holding the gouge any other way. So if we started with... Uh, let's say this style, which the Raptor is one of them. The way it works is you put the flat on the platform and then the two points touch the wheel. So we have three points of contact, one, two, and three all at once. Well, this needs a little adjustment. So I'm going to loosen that up. and set it to three points of contact. One, 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 two, and three. And that should give me a 40 degree angle. So here's something you're gonna notice here when, when I'm doing this, and now I'm gonna take another one. Uh, this is, these are, these are 3D printed, and I believe you can probably find the, if you have a 3D printer, you can probably find the directions. So I'm going to put this one. This one, you touch the two points here, and you have the flat on the platform. It's just like the Raptor, but without that long part for setting up your V-arm. So if I get this on here, I'm going to say, Oh, okay. So that's exactly the same as the Raptor setting. When I put this on, it gave, it put my platform exactly the same place. Um, what's next? We'll do this. Ron Brown, it's the same thing. We want one, 
two, three points of contact flat on the platform, two points on the wheel. Oh, look, it's not the same. So to get this one, I'm going to have to readjust my platform. And you, so you're going to say, oh, my God, those angle gauges aren't consistent. They're way off. And then we're going to take stews and we're going to do the same thing here, although this does it a different way. This one now, I am not going to touch this top point to the wheel. What I'm going to do is, is put the, this is a, it's a little radius, about like the radius of an 8-inch wheel right here. And that conforms to my wheel. And then I want to see the platform or the uh, flat with the platform, but it's not, you see, it's not quite the same. So for this one, I would be, listen this up again. I'm going to put it on the wheel and I'm going to adjust the platform. Uh, one thing I often do is I'll take a, a tool handle or something and tap the platform on one side or the other to get it to move just a little bit. So that's about right. This being a stone wheel, its diameter is going to change. Um, okay, so Sam's got a good point. Can you check the angles with the protractor? Um, not really, because the protractor mechanically just doesn't quite get in there. You know, the geometry of it doesn't work for checking this kind of angle. That's why we have all these other angle gauges. Because they do check an angle right here. Okay, so we've got it's not quite the same. Okay, so I, I did this. I, I set up the platform, and then I took my roughing gouge, spindle roughing gouge, be careful how you say that, and I ground the angle on my spindle roughing gouge. And then I checked that with the protractor, because here the protractor can do the job, might be easier looked at here. One leg of the protractor in the bottom of the flute, the other leg conforming to the bevel on the tool, read the angle. Well, amongst all of these that seem to be a, just a slightly different 40 degree setting, um, who is that? Okay, we'll go over here. They, they were all within a couple of degrees. So I'm going to say plus or minus a couple of degrees is plenty good. Uh, okay, if you type the hashtag angle gauge wrong, just do it again. Um, and by the way, anyone who is typing the, the, uh, Hashtag angle gauge to win the Stuart Batty angle gauge number one in the drawing. And you think, oh, well, I'll just type it in there 15 times, and then I'll have more chances to win. You won't, because this software uh, checks for duplicates. All right, so, so I have my platform set to 40 degrees. I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight, tight in the, in the V-arm thing, or in the, uh, in the socket there. And... Now is what I will use to do my 40-40 grind. And that would be from here. And let's see, yeah, let's just do that so we can see how that goes. And here's a V flute Thompson gouge. What I'm going to do for this kind of grind is I'm going to line up the gouge 
with that sweep line that I put on there. And then I'm going to line up the flute. I'm going to roll the, roll the tool, not too far, but just so that the inside flat of the flute is parallel to the platform. Do one wing, do the other wing, and then blend them at the tip. We'll turn the grinder on. I've got my safety glasses on. I'm going to line up the sweep angle, and then I'm going to line up the wing and do a straight wing on each side and then blend them in the middle. And what I'm looking for is a wing that is either a straight line or slightly convex. And what I've got is a point that sticks out past the wing, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do a little more grinding. This is one of those that I said I was going to show what happens if it's not if it doesn't look quite right, and how did I get it there to begin with? Well, it, does, it didn't look quite right because I spent more time grinding the wing than the tip. So I didn't take off as much material there, but now I have fixed it by just grinding more on the tip. So uh, if I am going to do a 40-40 grind from scratch. And we're going to go according to the Ron Brown jig. The first thing I'm going to do is put the gouge face down, flute down on the platform and grind a flat across the whole shape. From there, if I'm using the platform, I will grind my wing parallel to that line. You see, I'm going to grind until my grinding Oh, and see, I'm not quite parallel, so I need to roll it slightly a little more to take more off of that extreme wing. So I'll do that on both wings, and then I'll do the same at the tip. I'll get to the line and create my shape. What I just did here was uh, slow down the grinder because I want to stop the grinder so I can do the other part of the setup. So whether I'm using the Ron Brown jig or the platform, if I'm creating a 40-40 from scratch, I'm going to start with it flute down, and I'm going to grind a flat across the entire shape of the, of the gouge. You can see I've, I've still got that flat on part of it, and I ground it even with that line of the flat on this, this wing. And that was done on the platform. Now, if I'm doing this with that, that jig, what I'm going to do is, and this, this is using the Wolverine jig our standard Wolverine that everybody's so uh, fond of here. This Wolverine carrier and I've got this Ron Brown device and here's what I need to do to set this up. First off, I take the, the wing nut adjustment and I put it all the way up. Tighten it down good. Then I'm going to take this jig and put it in, 
I'll do that quite a bit for this. Put it in where the gouge would go. This is actually quite cleverly thought up here. Ah, uh, good question here. Does it make any difference if it's a V, a U, or elliptical flute? Well, I, I don't know about U flutes. I think that's kind of like a bottom bowl gouge or spindle roughing gouge. But for a, a V or an elliptical uh, or a parabolic, it's the same process. And they work pretty much the same, too. So I've got this, this jig in the carrier where the gouge would go. And I don't have an actual Wolverine V arm, but I made this, I made this to uh, do the same job. So pretend it's a V arm. The way this, this one of mine here works is it's just a homemade deal. I took a piece of square tubing and smashed the end and drilled a hole in it. And that hole guides the end of the uh, carrier. So I'm going to put the, the carrier's point in the V-arm or in this thing here. And I'm going to adjust it in and out until both of these points touch the wheel and tighten it up. And that sets the distance of the V arm from the grinding wheel. Now here's something that is uh, markedly different about this jig. The stick out amount from the carrier, and I gotta tighten this down quite a lot onto this gap here. See if we can see it better up here. Here. The stick out distance wants to be not your standard one and three quarters or two inches, but three inches. And quite conveniently, this little Ron Brown jig has a three inch stick out measurement built into it. So I'm setting the stick out at three inches. That'd be 75 millimeters approximately. And I'm using this jig to get me there. Now I've got the standard Wolverine setup. Maybe easier seen from here. Is that as far out as we go? I guess so. And I'll, I'll grind um, I'll grind until the flat that I ground on the face of the, the, uh, flute is gone. So I'm doing this just like your typical Wolverine grind. And I'm trying to, um, put the right amount of pressure on the wheel to get the shape I want. That thing uh, that he has figured out to stick the tool out three inches instead of instead of uh, two inches or one and three quarters really makes a difference because that's getting me the tool higher up on the wheel and it ends up grinding the wing better. How do I know what position to put the very grind arm to? Um, this arm is always just set all the way to the stop. This arm is set using this jig in the carrier, and I just showed that a second ago. I could do it again um, once I have the grinder stopped, but with the grinder running, I can't really do that. Uh, so that should help a lot. Um, I think I'm caught up with the comments there. Okay, so that's what it's like when everything is good. And 
sometimes everything is, well, not so good. And can we get a little more here? And one of the things I see with a jig grind quite often, we're going to turn the grinder back on, is that you spend too much time on the wing and you end up with this kind of a a concave wing shape where the tip is sticking out a lot. The other thing that I see with jig grind is where you spend a lot of time on the tip and you end up with kind of a a hump in the wing and a dip at the tip and neither of those will cut very well. So what happens, what do I do when I get this? Well, the, the, the thing I'm going to try to convey to you here today is that you have to do some work here to get the right grind out of your jig. All the jig does is set the angle. So if I want to fix that, I'm going to watch where I'm grinding and I'm going to blend it out. And then on the other side too. Now I do not usually sharpen with this course of a grinding wheel, but it's really great for this demonstration. So now I have fixed my wing Oh, not quite. Got to do a little more work right there. And I am just barely touching. I'm almost lifting it up off the wheel to keep from having it put too much pressure down on the wheel. Grind a little more on the wing there. Okay, that's looking good. Now... What am I going to do to make sure I don't mess up like that next time I go over to the grinder? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to pay attention to how much pressure I need to put on the wheel to get the shape I want. And I'm going to put more pressure on the wing than I do at the tip. At the tip, there's there's less metal to grind away, so it tends to grind quicker at the tip, and that's why it's so easy to get a dip at the very tip. The other the other thing is I'm not going to just sit there and grind for a long time because that's what gives me the concave wing with the tip sticking out. I'm going to be paying attention to watching the tool on the wheel and paying attention to what I get, what results I'm getting, I mean, from my grinding. I'm going to just um, smooth this one out. And then I want to go all over to the platform. Yeah, let's turn the grinder off. Uh, putting less pressure and letting gravity do the work is kind of what I'm doing, but really what I am doing exactly is not entirely letting gravity do all the work. I am, I am putting an appropriate varying amount of pressure to to achieve the shape I want. Like right now, I'm holding it up off the wheel so that gravity isn't doing the work. I'm not, not letting gravity do all that it wants to do. And here I'm, now I'm letting gravity do all the work. And now I'm lifting it up a bit because I want less pressure than the weight of the tool from gravity would give me. Another thing I'd like to do is even out those wings by grinding more on this one.
And I don't know, I like a nice rounded tip there. I don't want the tip to be uh, faceted and flat. Okay, so this is good. And what I'm going to do now is take this out of the carrier. And I'd like to show you something about this, this carrier uh, and this, this whole jig system here that's unfortunate or to keep in mind. You see how much flute's left on this gouge, right? So if I put this one in the jig and I put my stick out setup guide in well the the end of the flute the end of the flat on the flute is right here and it's not sticking out enough so basically i'm not going to get the whole life out of my gouge if i use this method and if you have a robust gouge they are they are um making them where they you can kind of see here let me try to describe this on this gouge you can see how where the flute is milled it's lower it kind of and it kind of comes up the hill here and then it's this distance is greater than this distance that's why the very grind won't seat well on the back end of the flute. But the robust, they flattened off the top of the gouge. Genius. Why didn't anybody think of that uh, before? And yes, Philip is suggesting that we do it ourselves. Yes, that would work. And that's kind of what a person would need to do if they want to use that, that kind of a jig and get the whole life out of their gouge. Because that's, you know, that's like half the gouge length or more unusable. Whereas if you platform grind, you can get down to the very bitter end of your flute, no problem. So I'd like to uh, take this jig out and we'll put our platform back in. And I want to, I want to check how close to the platform grind did that jig get? And what I have seen in the past with jig grinds, so that's is that the side, one? side view, yeah. That's not quite set up, so we're going to just change it, three points of contact. Um, most of the jig grinds that I have seen would get me a different angle on tip and wings. So we're going to test this one on the platform and just see how close it actually got. And I really only care right up at the tip. In fact, I'm going to freehand grind away that heel here pretty soon. Um, so question by Andrea is it a problem if the metal heats up and the edge turns red um, e yes red will weaken the edge and the way that goes with tool with steel temperatures is there's a specific temperature related to the color uh, light straw is one temperature um, Darker brown's another one, blue's another one, red, dull red's another one, bright red's another one. You don't ever want to get anything bright red because that's like about to melt and it will ruin the temper. Uh, a, a, an alloy like M42, I believe it does not like to get blue. None of them want to get red. Red is like for soldering or welding or something. Um, the Thompson... 10V gouge. Uh, most people will say that 10V can withstand blue, which I think is 1100 or something like that. Cut a small piece from the end of the gouge so it 
fits in the flute. Yeah, um, you could make an insert for the flute that will that will give you a flat to seat the the carrier for the jig. Now this one's got a flat on it, but it's for the set screw. It's not for the uh, it's not for the jig. And will that gauge be as accurate as Stewart's? Oh yeah. Well, I think I was just just trying to say that I tried three or four. Let's see, one, two, three, four different ways to set an angle of platform to wheel, and all of them claimed to be 40 degrees, and they were all slightly different, but truth was they're within a couple of degrees, and I think that's close enough. I don't think you need to be like 40.000 degrees. I think anywhere from uh, 40 two to 40 to or 38 to 42 no problem so so now i'm i've got my magic marker uh edge here and i'm gonna do the platform grind and see how close it is so i'm going to get here and grind my wing and i'm doing a better job of the the shape here because I can see better but it looks to me pretty darn close I've got right here where this wing um, I'm gonna say I want that wing to be more like that and I'm shaping the wing based on what I see not based on what the what the jig does so Okay, the verdict is Ron Brown's best. Not too bad. If you have to use a jig, uh, that one looks good. Um, let's keep that on, and I'm going to um, do my free hand. And this is free hand. That means that my hands are on the platform. The tool is not on the platform. There is no reason whatsoever to set up a precise secondary bevel angle here because all you really want to do is get the heel out of the way narrowing the cutting bevel down to about a millimeter and a half sixteenth of an inch um, there there is a difference in how the jigs go based on uh, the different size of the wheel and what he means by that would be this is a stone wheel so as I use it as I dress it it gets smaller in diameter my other wheels are CBNs and that won't happen to them so the CBN wheels um, it, it will always be the same I think though that what it gets down to is that there are differences in the geometries of those different gauges. I believe Stewart's is the most accurate. And that's because if you look at how his uh, goes, let me find it here again. If you look at how this one works, it's just making the angle checking the angle, setting the angle, right there close to the surface of the platform where your tool's edge is going to be. The other ones are, are taking um, a larger, larger part of the wheel between these two points and not necessarily setting it right there where you're going to use it. So that actually is, is Stu's big um, thing he says about why he likes that design of angle gauge because uh, with the with measuring it right there where you're going to use it he thinks you're getting a more accurate angle and you probably are uh, but the truth is that they're all accurate enough all of them so use what you find easy Raptors are not available in very many angles. 
Stu's set of angle gauges gives you the most amount of angles you can get. And so therefore, I think that's probably the deluxe system. Because I can't find uh, raptors in every size I like. And the 3D printed ones, well, I only got three angles of that too. And they're angles I use a lot, but what if I wanted a different one? All right, so we're going to do a drawing now. And get your um, hashtag angle gauge, all lowercase, no spaces, please, into the comments so that you can win. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the drawing window. So we're going to count to 10, count down from 10, and that will be drawing time. So if you can type fast, get it in there. And Casey, entering twice doesn't get you two chances to win, unfortunately. Um, so it looks like we've got 50 entries, I think it says there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to do a drawing. Uh, 52 entries. And our winner is, our winner is Tim Ivins. Yay, Tim. Congratulations, Tim. Uh, I probably do not have your contact info. So if you could please send me, um, preferably an email so you don't put your contact info into the chat for everyone. And here is my email. Email me here and let me know where to send your Stuart Batty number one angle gauge. So yeah, thank you all for participating. That was fun. Um, any last questions or comments? Get them in there. It's about time for me to to end the stream here. Um, so last questions, anyone? What was 14? Only somebody said something uh, about 64 people watching and only 14 thumbs up. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I guess I'm not very entertaining this time, no. Sorry, folks. Uh, but I did give something away. That counts for something, doesn't it? Okay. If you use the same jig all the time, you'll always achieve the same result. Yes. And there, right there, is the best point to make of all. Because if you, like I said, that they're all close enough. So if you just get one you like, you use it all the time, you're going to get the same result every time. And, and that's really what, what counts the most. Uh, so, yeah, whichever one it is you like, use that one. And can I share a link to the drawing tool? Oh, the StreamYard giveaway tool. Um, well, I could. Uh, let me see. It's StreamYard.com slash giveaway. And if you go to StreamYard.com, if you use their, their service, uh, and you, they have a free version, but I use the paid one, so I don't have ha to have a watermark. Um, if, you use, if you go to StreamYard's website and you click help, you can find out how to use their giveaway tool. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, and what I've done is, is shared a separate open browser window with the StreamYard tool on it so that I can, here we are in the geek, the geek sector once again. I can put the StreamYard giveaway tool up here uh, and you can see it along with me. So, okay, so I think I am going to say good night to everyone and i hope you all had fun i'm sorry about that little glitch in the middle there i uh, just want to give a another um another if i can get over here that wasn't it um are we here 
Uh-huh. Nope, we're not here. Okay, I'm just going to say goodnight. Um, don't forget, I've got a demo on uh, the 29th. Lidded hollow vessel with the collar and finial. And uh, I hope to see you there. I hope to see you at some of the other things there. Like this weekend, AAW's uh, Wood Turning Fundamentals Live. And there are prizes there, and I'll be giving them away. So uh, let's all go have some fun. All righty. Bye-bye, everyone.